Welcome to Rudy Sassou's Science Fantasy Experience and to my top five toys of 2019. So these aren't toys that specifically came out in 2019, they're just ones that I've picked up over the last six months and I just thought I'd choose my five favourites I guess. So let's literally jump right in. But before you ever do a top five or a top ten, I've got to give an honourable mention. So the first, the honourable mention, goes to this, the Tamiya Junior Vanessa's Lunchbox. Finding this in the wild, in a, a random collectible shop, was mind blowing. I had not seen one in so many years and it was the one that I wanted as a kid and never got. And it is so much fun to play with. I just I couldn't believe it. It was like an absolute nostalgia trip to get one, and to build it, and then to fire it up and play around with it. Half the time it lives on display because it's such a cool display piece. Other times I'll whack the batteries in it and let it chase the cat. So the honorable mention goes to Vanessa's lunchbox. So, in ascending order, number five. He is the terror that flaps in the night. He is the toy I never knew I needed so much. He is Darkwing Duck. Yeah, who'd have thought this made it into the top five because it has got like two points of articulation, maybe three. His head only just moves and his arms, he barely holds his weapon. But he's not gonna hold it, never does. He just looks like he jumped off the screen. As I said, I just, I never knew I needed a Darkwing Duck so much. And for the cheap price of 10 quid, it's incredible fun, it's just, it's such a cool display piece and especially where Darkwing Duck is my favourite Disney cartoon of that kind of period from the late 80s, early 90s. I'm just so happy to have one. Darkwing Duck in at five. So, number four. I'm pretty shocked that this actually made it into the top five when I was choosing what to go in, it kind of, I looked at it and then just thought, yeah, this has got to go in. Because it's Frankenstein, it is the NECA T800 from Terminator 2. But that is not the head that it comes with. And the fact that I won it on eBay and nobody bid on it, I just couldn't believe it. So I ended up getting it for like £12. I don't always mention prices, but when something is a tenner and something is 12 quid, I, I want to kind of like be like, yeah, look what I got. Because you can find deals when you go on the toy hunt, whether it's in the wild or online, you've just got to persist. And for me, it really is a beautiful version of Arnie and the T800. Just the, the absolute detail and it's perfect for my idiosyncratic collecting that you know I have a picture in my mind of you know what toy representation I want of various movies cartoons and toys from the different decades that this just does it in abundance maybe when I come back to this in six months time when I do you know maybe a top 10 of the years he'll be back yeah, yeah that, that sounded a lot better in my head moving on 
Number three. So, this was always going to make it into the top five. It's the toy lost in time. It is the AWE Striker and Hogwatcher. I mean, crankcase. To unbox this a few months ago in a surprise package was incredible. To realise that it was my original one that had been kept in storage for 25 years, it just, it was beyond belief that my dad had kept it in, in storage and I had truly forgotten how good G.I. Joe and Action Force vehicles are. The fact that I kept it in such incredible condition as a kid, because I played with it, you know, a fair bit, and then not so much at the end. I think I even displayed toys as a kid, and this was often on display. And to own Hogwatcher, you know, the official figure force fifth member now. I just, I get a bit speechless looking at it. It just, it's a real piece from my childhood and I don't have many left because I donated a lot of them. So to own my very first Action Force toy again makes it such a great addition and that's why it's number three in the top five. So, number two. Let's croak us some toads. That would be the Boss Fight Studios Bucky O'Hare Toad Soldier. This is incredible. I've just, I did a video of this two weeks ago because, you know, I kind of, I bought it on a, on a whim. I just, I wanted to get a new action figure and I just kind of stumbled across it and I had no knowledge really of, of Boss Fight Studios and then when I realised that you could take it out of the package and keep it either in or out, I was just, I was mind blown. All I've done for the past like week is put it into the, and out of the package because I just can't decide how I want to display it because it looks great in package because it, it's a card back that just looks like it stepped out of, you know, 1992. And then the figure, the figure just is absolutely phenomenal. It's just how well action figures can be made is incredible nowadays. All the articulation, it's just so, so good. And the colours really really pop and it's just I wanted a representation of Bucky O'Hare that wasn't either Deadeye or Bucky himself so I'm just great to you know to have a bad guy a goon some laser fodder so yeah number two the toad soldier from Bucky O'Hare and then finally number one I think I always knew this was going to be number one from the first six months because it is one of the best action figures I own. It looks like it jumped off the screen. The detail is incredible. It is the Diamond Select Real Ghostbusters Egon Spengler. The detailing on this figure from the texture of the hair to the glasses, the ruffles in the uniform, all the accessories, the PKE meter, the trap, the proton pack, it just, it's one of, if not the best action figure I own in all my collection from any, any decade. The standard of action figures nowadays are, are just phenomenal and for a decent price point as well, you know, you're, you're only in the realms of, you know, 20 to 25 pounds for an action figure and something as as good as that and it's it's huge you know if I compare it to Darkwing Duck it just it towers it towers over it and when Ghostbusters you know all of Ghostbusters is one of my favorite franchises whether it be the cartoon the toys 
the movies, even, you know, the extreme Ghostbusters and various iterations. I love pretty much every aspect of Ghostbusters and to have your favourite character done in such a style, it's, it blows me away. So yeah, number one, Egon Spengler. How many of these will make it to the end of the year when I do another top five of 2019? Who knows? There's always loads of stuff coming out and there's always vintage pieces I want to pick up. Who knows what will be in the top five. May the toy hunt continue. Thanks for watching. Bye.